you know what, Kathy, what's interesting too is that he does point out some great points. He talks about how Gaddafi uh, was pretty much put there, how back in the day Gaddafi was praised for some of the works he did. He was almost an ally of the United States and now the United States is, is having a, a big problem with, of course, him being a dictator. What will happen? You look at the Warfala tribes there, you've got about 130 groups in Libya that want to overthrow the government. There were failed coups in 1993. What's going to happen, gentlemen, should we even be meddling in that business? Warner. Well, I mean, first of all, as far as Farrakhan goes, I mean, uh, some of the things he may have been saying about it may be right, but to, to go to the extreme hyperbole of saying what he said about President Obama is, is ridiculous. I mean, I'm no President Obama fan, but some of the things that he said about the president are just absurd. I mean, you know, suddenly he's, well, you know, it's just yeah, nuts. The only thing I don't like about Farrakhan is his speeches last three hours. If you <laughs> right. cut him down to like 20 minutes, get a, I think get I might be able to listen <laughs> and try to digest but, what but he's trying as far to say, as but three we, hours is too if long. If we should be in there, I mean, certainly, certainly we'd like to see dictators fall. Right. I don't care if they were our friends in the past or not. <laughs> but should I'd we like be arming rebels? Fall, well, should you know? we, are we be arming but, quote unquote rebels? But, but, but what are the rebels? We, I mean, do we even know? Do Thank we know you. who they are? Thank you. I see, mean, we don't. We don't the, see. In, in in a lot of these cases, when when co countries fall and, and there's a, a rebel army, yeah. usually we know who they are. They were part of government, a minority perhaps, part of government, or or there's they have a philosophy and leaders. But we have no clue who these guys are in, in Libya. None. Listen, we, we know who they are because we put most of them up in office. Most of them were funded by us. Most of them were put into office. And we, the term dictator is misleading. There are good dictators and bad dictators. Uh -oh. Not good dictators that are <laughs> nice guys. I'm talking about good dictators that we like, uh. who are aligned with our foreign policy, like Mubarak. We loved Mubarak. Mubarak yeah, did whatever we wanted him to do for $1.6 billion. <laughs> and Facebook and it. Twitter took him down. <laughs> Pretty much. And then Facebook and Twitter came in and took down the uh, third Intifada page. Right. The, the problem is in the Middle East, it, they're easy targets to hate. Yeah. We can start a war in Libya because we don't like them. Try starting a war in North Korea. We're afraid of this guy in North Korea. Why don't we go invade North Korea? Kim Jong Il. Yeah, yeah. this guy's a maniac. Right. Is he any less worse than well, and, yeah, Gaddafi? And there are dozens of, do of these uh, of these countries around that where their dictator leaders are killing their own people by the buckets full. Yeah. Why but, are we doing this now? But, Obviously, there's a lot of oil in Libya and a lot of European oil companies working out of Libya. Mm -hmm. So, is that the the greatest motivation? So the More people become almost. An insignificant concept. We don't care, about the, we we don't do care, about, care about the people. We care about profit. We care about the oil. Obama and, may and, care and, about and, the people, but the people around him don't care about what he cares about. He's Listen. a Nobel Peace Prize winner, right? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. And see, here's the deal. Kathy, help me out. The United States seems to want to pick and choose where we go. And you look at some other African countries. Where we didn't go in and send the CIA in. Right. We didn't invade. Right. Right. Why do exactly. you think that is, Kathy? I think it's one of those um, choosing your battles carefully, um, and it's one of those, well, you know, I can maybe skate and slide by if I don't do anything over here, but I better make sure that I'm making some type of statement and making a stance over here because, you know, I've, I've got to protect my interests, and it's just a choosing your battles wisely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lib I'm Libby is the proof that I was going to say that we made a mistake by going into Iraq. If we hadn't have gone into Iraq, Iraq probably would have had pro-democracy demonstrations and protests, might have evolved like every place else, but we have weakened our position. We're stuck in Iraq, we're gonna be stuck in Afghanistan, we're gonna be in Libya. We might as well just go to every Arab country now and put troops, because we're gonna be there in 10 years in every country. This is exactly what I did not want President Barack Obama to do. I, I, I really wanted our president to, to end his four-year tenure here, We're coming up soon, 2012, being out of Afghanistan, being out of Iraq, and now we're in Libya. That but he, frustrates he's, he's me made no absolutely end. no moves at all. Think he's a puppet on way. a string? Think he's a puppet? I wouldn't say that he's a puppet on a string. I just think he's got incredibly bad foreign policy. Well, let's, get, let's get to that. I'm going to take some phone calls here. 773-487-3630 is my number. One last comment before we transition. Ray, 
You had something, I think, on your Twitter that said, hate against Muslim Americans has become mainstream and popular. What do you mean by that, quickly? They, I, if they could put it in a, a campaign brochure, they'll get votes by it. When somebody stands up and says that uh, some obscure guy that nobody ever heard of, that uh, I won't appoint any Muslims to any national mm -hmm. office, suddenly he becomes famous overnight. This is a great way now to pick on Muslims. And they, most people, unfortunately, don't even know what a Muslim is. They yeah. look at me, think I'm Muslim, Arabs, Middle Eastern. We all could be Muslim except That's for you. That, well, no, the, I, no could be, I could be Muslim, too. I yeah. mean, every, every single but race on the planet has, yeah. has Malcolm easy, X pointed that out at Mecca. When he went sure, to Malcolm certainly. X goes to Mecca, he's like, wow, right. there's white people that are <laughs> wow, Muslim. Exactly. Warner, yes, exactly. quickly, uh, d agree, disagree with Ray's point of view here? I mean, have well, we demonized I, I, Muslims can, in America? Demonization gets people... Forward I, th I think we can look at the FBI crime statistics and see that uh, uh, hate crimes against Jews are far, far more yeah. larger, uh, far, far larger than hate crimes against Muslims. So I, I don't know that, that it's I know translating into that. actual. Well, they do. I mean, I, right, the FBI says it. So what does that know. mean, though? What does it mean? Well, yeah, by the numbers. We should do there's, more there's, about the hate crimes against Jews, but that doesn't mean we should stop fighting the hate crimes against Muslims. Well, Let's not, yeah. go to hate crimes as it pertains to iPhones a little bit later, and mm. let's look look first at the anti-abortion mm. billboard campaign mm. taking place right here in Inglewood. Mm -hmm. Kathy, I was what out there. is up? You were out there. Talk to me about this campaign using uh, President Barack Obama's likeness saying, hey, the next baby that you abort may be a great leader. Talk to me. What was what was the, uh, the tenor? Uh, it was very loud, very racy. Um, you could barely hear the Texas-based group Life Always because of the protesters that were out there. And I understand their frustration. I asked them, why was Obama's picture used? Well, he represents, for the African-American community, the highest achievable office. I said, OK, well, and he's from Chicago. Well, we have others that have achieved high office that have made history in Chicago. They're also considered leaders. Now, they have 30 billboards that are supposed to go up. I asked again today, what are the other locations? They failed to give me the other locations, but they're primarily on the south and west sides in the low income and underserved communities. Is this aimed at black women? Say that again? Is this aimed at black women as campaign? Pretty much, yes. Yes, it's, it's aimed at black women. Um, and then they asked, well, you know, people were saying, who brought you here? We didn't ask you to come here. Mm -hmm. Reverend Isaac Hayes, he said that they reached out to him and he said, okay, well, you know, yep. let's come on out here. So then I asked, well, did you reach out to any of the pro-life, pro-choice groups here and let them know that this was a plan to come here? Let me get your feedback. They're still coming anyway, but at least I want to let you know. He said, no, we're, we're giving out, you know, brochures. We'll give you some information. I'll meet with them afterwards. Would have been a good idea if you met with them beforehand. Mm. And there's an online petition um, on change.org that Lakeisha Gray Sewell started to get the billboards down. Warner, pro-life, pro-choice, is this a sinister campaign or is this a campaign worth, worthwhile? Well, of course, it's, a, it's, you know, it's one of the, the biggest sticking points of our culture has had for, well, at least since 1974. Um, uh, this is the same group that had a, a, a big billboard in New York mm -hmm. that, uh, that said that the abortion is, is a black genocide. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's hard not to agree with that statement uh, when you look at, at, the, at the numbers of abortions and how many occur uh, to women, uh, minority women. I mean, it's, imagine how many more black men and women and we would have out there able to become leaders like Barack Obama if, if this was, uh, if, if abortion was less. But it's certainly a hot button issue and it's very, you know, very controversial. So are you uh, saying that Roe v. Wade is wrong? Uh, I think Roe v. Wade was wrong on a federal level. I think it should be states should decide. Uh, if Illinois wanted to, to, to allow abortion, that's what the people want. Okay. But I, I don't think it should be a national one size fits all law. I see you, Kathy. Let me go to Ray, though. <laughs> Ray, if let's say this billboard campaign is the opposite, let's. What if this billboard campaign was basically saying black women on the south and west side start aborting? Or if wouldn't they, there be more of an uproar? Or if there, there was a billboard that said, if we don't have abortion, we might have more John Boehners, and they put his picture on a billboard. Let me just say that I, I dislike. I understand the abortion issue. 
It's heated on both sides. What I dislike is when they put it in a racial context. Mm -hmm. When some reason, I still don't buy this argument. Okay, it's economic, I think. It's not racial. I think that it's more about economy. I think that people that have money, you don't hear about their right. abortions. You don't hear about what they do. Maybe instead of having an abortion, they can pay to do whatever. Mm -hmm. So I, I just don't like the idea that somehow this is a problem in the black community. And that, that to me is a message that the billboard has that offends me. I don't mind seeing someone use Obama's caricature on a billboard because that's fair politics. But when they start making it racial, when they just target African-American communities, you know, I, I think that's wrong. Yeah. Let's, uh, you, Kathy, did you have a follow-up? Well, I mean, with 30 billboards that you've got going on around the city and you want to say that, you know, this could be your next leader, we have plenty of other leaders in addition to Obama that have come from Chicago. Why not have it a series of different faces mm. for that? Right. Yeah. I mean, and, and then they said that they felt that the uproar from the community was more about seeing Obama's face than the actual facts. Yeah, and Obama's mother was a white woman from Kansas. Wow, let's move forward just quickly. Death by iPhone. We've got a close quickly here. Uh, Sally Katona King's friends found tragic irony in her death. A woman who did dedicated her life to helping the disadvantaged and downtrodden died because someone coveted an expensive cell phone. Push down the stairs. Fullerton L. Talk to me. The worst me, part Ray. of that story is that had this not been about an iPhone, if they had just stolen her purse and she had fallen down and died, nobody would have cared. That's the real tragedy I agree with of that. the story. That, that I agree with the that. iPhone makes it a story, and that makes me kind of sick. Yeah. It's yeah. really sad. It, it, it really is. And this perpetrator had a jacket on with the letters WS on the back. I hope they catch this perpetrator. Warner, talk to me. Uh, uh, how did this make you feel? Well, as, as Ray was saying, I mean, there's, there's crime happening day in and day out all over the place, but iPhone is the big selling thing, you know. Uh, now that iPhone has reached out to other companies and is uh, more available, suddenly it's a hot button issue, you know. So the, it, it, does, it does give you the, if it bleeds, it leads feel from the news, you know. Black market, and, and speaking exactly. of bleeding and leading, ChicagoDefender.com, <laughs> your thoughts on the iPhone death? Um, like they said, you know, if it wasn't about the iPhone, I mean, things happen, tragic things happen every day. We don't hear about them, but because it has to have that certain, you know, catch to it. Sorry. I, I hope they catch this person, and I think they so, will. Right. I think police yeah. are purposely not saying some things because you can trace an iPhone. I own True. an iPhone. Yeah. My wife knows exactly where I am. <laughs> Because she can I don't trace. want to say I own an iPhone any. No, I'm just joking. I think I won't get one now, just for that. And Absolutely. then you've got to think about the cameras uh, around the buses and the L stuff. We hope so. they've got some information. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to thank you guys for watching, and I want to thank you all for watching Off 63rd. My guests, Kathy Cheney, Warner Todd, Houston, and Ray Hanania. Continue the discussion after the show by calling my voicemail at 773-487-1352. Send me an email, Gerard at Off63rd.com, and visit our website, www off 63rd.com. Hey, thanks for watching the show. Remember, victory, it's yours. I need you to stay positive, keep your head up, and always be encouraged. Have a good night. Everyone.